Hey guys, this is Jace Lejeune from Gridiron Football. Welcome to our Gridiron Football Player of the Week show. And I'm joined by a coach herself over at Riverside Academy and a pretty special uh, running back on the side of him. That's Deja Glasty uh, from the Riverside Academy Rebels. But we're going to talk about his Gridiron Football Player of the Week performance. And it was just awesome, just overall, coach, because first we got to talk about his performance. I mean, that, that was unbelievable last year we had chad elsey on our show he was one of our player of the weeks and he had nine touchdowns like i'm not sure if i'm ever going to see that again well only took about a year later to see that in action and uh nine touchdowns uh, for desert glassy unbelievable 29 carries 540 yards and uh it was it was a great game it was a track meet on grass because you had Harlem Barry on the other side as well and uh, and coach, we'll start with start off with you. You got a front row seat to see it, uh, see your running back uh, have those highlight plays. So, what you thought about it being part of this this game and, and seeing a t that type of performance that you know that's hardly ever seen uh, with a performance like that? Yeah, it was a, a game that uh, leading up into the game, we knew two good running backs, one on each side, and uh, you know we both have a lot of respect for for Harlem and competing against him is. Uh, the last couple of years has, has really been fun for, for us. And, and uh, so a lot of respect to them and, and what, what they did on the other side of the ball. But, uh, yeah, Dedrick, uh, in the biggest games, he, he shows up, you know, in this same game last year, he had a similar performance with over 300 yards and uh, a lot of big explosive runs. And, and he did that again uh, last Friday night. Uh, I've never seen a performance like that at the running back position that I've been a part of. Uh, you know, but he'll he'll be the first one to give a lot of credit to uh, the guys up front and uh, and even our quarterback and receivers early in that game. Uh, we were 16 for 17 passing um, and, and that obviously does some things for the run game. And then, you know, you're able to, to get some lighter numbers in the box and you hand it off to to a player who in space, once you get him to the second and third level, he can get you a bunch of explosive runs. So, uh, you know, we challenged him all week, um, you know, the week before on, on some things that we thought could be better. Um, and, and I knew he'd step up to that challenge. And, and every big game, uh, he seems to do that, you know, even back to last year and mm -hmm. in the playoffs and in a Superdome against a really good Southern Lab team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and people do, you know, question him passing the eye test and height and weight and all that things. But I know when you give him the ball in big games, he seems to make plays. So uh, I'm really proud of him. Uh, not just the, the stats and the things that he did as far as touchdowns and numbers, but uh, the type of teammate he is and, and the way we can push him and coach him. And Desi, going back to you, because obviously you, you were the one that did it. <laughs> he had the nine touchdowns. And, uh, and like, you, like Coach mentioned, you had a big game. It wasn't like this wasn't the first time. You had a big game last year against the St. Lawrence team last year. Uh, with Harlem Barabee on the other side of it as well, is it just do you see that as like an opportunity? It was like, hey, like, I want to show people I'm this good too, and I can play at this level. So in these bigger games, when there's a lot of spotlight on it, is it an opportunity for you to really say, hey, I'm going to show off my stuff as well? Well, yes, yeah, sir, because he he brings all the cameras. So I'm sure everybody looks at it as an opportunity. So when he, well, when we got into that game, everybody had it on their mind and we were just going to play our best game. But we, Every week, that's what we go out to do. It was, everybody just looked at it different this game. Though. Yeah. Did you were you surprised by the numbers? Like when somebody told you what your final numbers were, like that you had five first time you heard it, five hundred forty yards, nine touchdowns. Did that like sink in? Did you have a feeling that you had that type of game, or like were you still a little bit surprised with the overall numbers when you first heard? I was surprised by the exact number, but I knew I was. I thought I was around three hundred yards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, coach, I'm going to ask y'all the same question. Um, mm -hmm. Was there a touchdown? I know it's hard because there were nine of them. That's like a season for, for a lot of people, but was there one touchdown in particular that really stood out to you of the nine? Yeah, I think one that uh, kind of really kind of fired me up is uh, we had a big play. Uh, they called a penalty that maybe I didn't agree with. Uh, so it backed us up to like a first and 25, uh -huh. um, you know, and what play do you call in a first and 25? And we hand him off a, an inside zone play and uh, 
not only does he pick up the extra 15 that we just lost, he takes it about 70 to the house. And so just kind of the way that one built up uh, mm. was kind of one that, that stuck out to me. Uh, but I, I tell him all the time, I tell Dedrick, it's, it's not always the, the 70 and 80 yard ones that, that mm. get you going and fire you up. Sometimes it's those tough six to seven yard runs that, that, you know, set up the next play. And, and those are just as good as the big ones. And, uh, but I know if you give him enough touches and he does the right thing enough times, those big plays, they're going to happen. So, uh, yeah, there, there was quite a few when you rush for 540 yards that, that impress you. But that was one that sticks out to me. Dedrick, was there one that stood, stood out to you uh, in the game? That was the same play right there. Same play. Same play. Yeah, that, that's, that's a really cool, really awesome. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's just unbelievable performance. Nine touchdowns, 540 yards. We get it. Um, but I don't think I've ever seen a game where the other running back uh, runs for 300 yards with five touchdowns and it's a running clock <laughs> at the end. It's just one of yeah. those crazy those crazy performances. Uh, that was really awesome to see. Um, now, now, Desha, going back to you. Um, I feel like everybody talks about your height, you know, like being 5'4", 140 pounds. But, like, to me, I feel like it gives you an advantage because, like, when you get the football and the line's trying to – defensive line, the defensive front trying to figure out where you're at, they can't find you because you get hit behind the line and then, boom, you just explode out in the open field and there you're at. So how do you take advantage of, you know, maybe that height and, and really use that to your advantage in your size? Well, like you said, it's, it's harder to see me coming out of the coming out of the backfield. So once I get through, it's already hard for a taller person to come down to my level and tackle me. So I use that as my advantage. Yeah. Oh, what do you think about that, Coach? I mean, like it, to me, I think it gives you an advantage knowing that you get hidden behind the line and and for a defensive player, it's hard, especially as quick as he is. It's hard to really find him in the, in, in, the, in the box. Yeah, we've. Uh... People ask me all the time about, you know, his size. And, and I uh, I was lucky to coach a kid at, at Nichols in my time there that, that I tell Dedrick that he reminds me of and a kid out of White Castle and, and uh, mm-hmm. Dontrell Taylor. And, and he was he was a special player for us. And he did it at the college level. Uh, mm-hmm. Dontrell was very similar to him. He, he was uh, in size, but, but just personality, too. Dontrell was a smart football player. Dedrick is. Uh, he's not just a guy out there running with the football. Uh, he understands the scheme. He understands pass protection. He understands route concepts. You can line him up in a slot. Uh, you know, and, and you're right. Some of the things he does, he it, it's to his advantage. You know, you get behind the offensive line on some of these zone schemes, and uh, once you get to the second and third level, uh, that's when he's at his best. Um, so he is a tough runner, uh, yeah. but he's a smart football player. And, and uh, yeah, I, I think uh, you know all he all it takes is one chance. I know he's just enjoying his senior year right now, and uh, he's not getting caught up too much in all the recruiting things, but all it takes is one, and um, I know he'll make some team happy. Yeah, and you mentioned it, Coach. You perfectly uh, explained it because it's not like, okay, you, you think, oh, he's, he's 5'4", 140 pounds, and, oh, he's going to be easy to bring down. He's not. I mean, uh, I'm seeing Dedrick's running like he's 240 pounds out there. Uh, it's hard to really bring you down uh, with a one-on-one guy, with one-on-one. And uh, Desiree, uh going back to that that question, right? Is there? There's a lot of people comparing you to like you know maybe like a Darren Sproles type of player, or uh, you know Bruce Vaughn, or or uh, somebody like that in those kind of lines. Is there a running back that you like to model your game after and like to really watch and kind of model your game? Well, growing up, I used to watch Marshall Falk. Marshall Falk. Okay, that's a good. That's a good one, Coach. I mean, like mm-hmm. usually a lot of these people say, you know, maybe the yeah, yeah. Name, that's, but that's a Marshall Falk. And, and Marshall Falk, being from Louisiana, being a New Orleans mm-hmm. native, and uh, his family's from that way. His dad grew up in New Orleans, but Marshall Falk was the same way. Could catch the ball in the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's probably a good, uh, good one to look up to in a style of play for for Dedrick. Yeah. What do you like about Marshall Falk, Dedrick? He could catch the ball out the backfield. It was hard to tackle him one on one. He knew football, and he was very explosive. Yeah, yeah, just like uh, just like you for sure. Um, I'm a very very special player, and even though we we also, uh, of course, this was a, definitely my vote. You know, when we went for nine touchdowns, 540 yards. But coach, like, we also leave it out to the fans to vote. And boy, did the Rebel community, the Riverside Academy community, and down the reserve, did they really show out? 
Um, the, so the vote, the top, the total vote tally for this is forty five thousand three hundred eighty eight votes to Dedrick Lasty. So over forty five thousand votes. Actually, if we combine the, we had like nine other nominees. Um, if we combine the, all of them together, that still wouldn't have not been enough to beat Dedrick Lassie. That wow. week. So, what can you say about the community uh, coming back and, and supporting Dedrick and allowing him to win this award for that? Yeah, year? I think if you look at that stat line that you just mentioned, 540 yards, nine touchdowns, even if you don't know who the player is, mm -hmm. state, I mean, you just look at those numbers. I mean, that's hard to do versus air on a walkthrough at practice, 500 mm. yards and nine touchdowns. Sometimes we have trouble doing that in practice. And yeah, I can imagine. Friday night yeah. and get that done, uh, mm -hmm. you can see why. You know, I don't I don't know if you need another nine players. You just look at that stat line. Yeah. You know, like you mentioned, Elsie last year from Ascension Catholic, mm -hmm. nine touchdowns. Something's going right. That player just had a, a special performance and a special game. So, uh, but I know our community, you know, locally in reserve in the River Parish, uh, got a lot of respect for Dedrick. Um, you know, they know what he's capable of the last couple of seasons. And uh, we got a good uh, support system here with our booster club and our, our parents, and they do a good job of rallying behind our kids. So, uh, yeah, a performance that, you know, anytime an individual performance um, can, can shed light to your school and your community and your team is always good. And, I try to tell them all the time with team success, you know, when you're winning games and good things are happening, the individual success starts to come. And uh, when you win big games like that, the, the cameras are, are rolling and uh, you get to do things like this. Yeah, that's your thoughts on like, uh, can you imagine getting 45,000 votes uh, going towards you? Talk about that, how cool that is. That's, that's very cool. That's creative. 45,000 people. I don't even know how many people that live in this community. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm glad to see that a lot of people like to see that what I'm doing. So I appreciate that. Yo, know, absolutely, Dedrick. And uh, and then I uh, know we got a couple more minutes, about three more minutes before we have to go back to class. Uh, so uh, just wrapping up, guys. Uh, so so Dedrick, for you, I mean, coaches mentioned Chad Elsey. Uh, you went against Harlem Berry. Like there, I don't remember a year and where like I just randomly point at a high school. And they got themselves a really good running back in the backfield. So, with that being said, Dedrick, what's your your pitch? You got you got a couple offers already. Uh, I know you got about three offers right now. So, what is your pitch uh, to college coaches? Because I know you perform really well in big games and you've had a great career. But what is your message to college coaches and why they should go out and recruit you to play at the next level? You should come recruit me because I'm explosive. I knew I actually know football. I want to be coached. Uh, I actually have love for football. I'm a smart player. And I can do everything. <laughs> clearly, clearly. Uh, coach, uh, uh, you, you've been around this young man. You coach this young man. Uh, so you can be perfect to also deliver your message on why coaches should go and recruit Dedrick, not only as a football player, but as a student athlete. What does he bring to the table for a college program? Yeah, along with all the numbers and the performances that he had as a football player, you're getting a uh, you're getting a good kid in your locker room. Uh, you're getting a good teammate. Uh, just good energy every day. He walks in with a smile on his face. He's fun to be around. He's fun to coach. You can push him. Uh, he's not a sensitive kid that when he you know when he doesn't make a play and you coach him that that uh, he shuts down. And uh, you're getting a, a a kid with a good family. Uh, you'd be getting a kid with good grades. Uh, so he's everything else besides the football player. He's going to be successful in whatever he does. Uh, and, and like I always tell him, it just takes one. It takes the, uh, the team who had success with somebody similar to him and his stature. Uh, you can move him around at the running back, at the slot position. You can do different things with him. He, he returns kicks. He returns punts. Uh, so that's kind of my pitch. I, I, I know he can play at the next level. Um, you know, it, it just takes the right place. Yeah, for sure. And uh, Dedrick, I know you got to give, I mean, credit, right? I mean, you can't run 540 yards, nine touchdowns all by yourself as good as, good as you are. So I know you got to give credit to those big guys up front and some of your teammates as well. So any guys want to give a shout out uh, that how really helped make that special performance happen? The whole offensive line, all my receivers, my quarterback, even the defense, mm -hmm. the whole team, coaching staff, everybody. Yep. I definitely, I know for sure as a running back, you definitely want to make sure those big boys get fed. <laughs> that's, that's <Sure>. for sure. <laughs> uh, and then uh, lastly, before we wrap it up, 
uh, guys. I mean, the, this is a really tough uh, playoff bracket we're about to talk about in a couple weeks. We talk about Division Four select. Y'all are all y'all went all the way to the state championship in the Superdome and played a really good Southern Lab team. So uh, just moving forward, Coach, uh, just uh, really good season already for y'all guys already. Uh, I believe only two losses was two losses on the season right now. Yeah. yeah. And uh, really looking strong going towards the playoffs. So uh, just kind of talk about the next couple of weeks and uh, what's the team focus on uh, to really cap off the regular season and get yourself some good momentum going to the playoffs. Yeah, we're sitting at four and two right now. Uh, we lost week one to Terrebonne, who's a really talented 5A team who has an opportunity to win that district. Uh, you look at their schedule and some of the teams they beat at the 5A level. Um, and in that game, we turned the ball over three times in some crucial uh, situations and uh, had a lead with a minute 30 left in the game and, and just couldn't hold on. And uh, so we look back at that loss and some things that we can work on moving forward. Um, and then our second loss came to Vermilion Catholic, who's currently mm -hmm. at number one in our division. And we played in the semifinals last year yeah. was led by another really good football player uh, in Dortes. And, yeah. and we have a lot of respect for what, what he does for that team. Uh, so, you know, and they were both good football games. And uh, when you play good competition like that early in the year, the goal is to get you better for a district play and into the playoffs. So we're excited about that that four and two start mm -hmm. and, and understanding we can learn from those losses. Uh, and then in the next couple of weeks, uh, we put ourselves in a, in a driver's seat to win the district. Uh, mm -hmm. we, this week we have Central Catholic Morgan City, who's not a district team, but another top 10 team in our division. And then you mentioned the playoffs in our division. You're right. I think it's a uh, deep division. I think there's 10 to 12 teams you look at that can uh, make a run and, and win this thing. And uh, I, I think that's a lot of credit to uh, there is good players in this in this class. You talked about just the, the running backs, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you look around, there's some talent and, and some well-coached teams. So uh, mm -hmm. we're excited. Uh, take it a week at a time. We still know we got some, some growth to do on, on both sides of the ball uh, and just trying to play your best football in late October heading into November. And then Desrick as well, as, as a senior, you know, uh, I know last year y'all you, you were part of a state championship team that, that was just close of uh, winning the state championship game. So what's your base with the motivation for this team as a senior leader, senior captain for this football team? Uh, what's just based on the message for the next couple of weeks in order for y'all to accomplish the goals that y'all want to accomplish? The message is to stay focused and stay on the grind. We all have one goal, and that's to get back to the state championship. So that's what we all trying to do. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, last thing, I'm going to let you know, Dedrick, congratulations. You've actually been invited to play in our Gridiron Football All-American Bowl game at the end of the year. It was well-deserved. We have a lot of college coaches at that game. A lot of players from around the South have all been all district, all state. So a lot of really good competition at the end of the year. So your reaction, we told you before we start uh, recording here, but your reaction of getting a chance, getting that, at least that invitation to, to play in that game at the end of the year. Uh, I appreciate the invite. I, mean, I, I could use it as an opportunity to showcase more of what I can do. So thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, any final thoughts before we wrap up here? No, I, I, I appreciate what you do and, and uh, taking your time out to interview myself and Dedrick and uh, what you do for high school sports. Uh, so I, I thank you. Oh, absolutely, Coach. Well, uh, what Dedrick's, I guess, his prize, what he's going to win. I know a lot of people are asking, what does he get, Jace? Well, he's going to get a uh, special Lerman jacket patch. He's going to say Gridiron Football Player of the Week. So uh, we're, we actually just ordered them, so we should be getting them in a couple weeks. But when we get them, uh, we'll make sure to send them out to, to Dedrick. He'll get the chance to wear his Lerman jacket and show off uh, the patch, too, saying Gridiron Football Player of the Week. So he's going to win that. So uh, congratulate. And also – uh, being player of the week, you're all automatically a candidate for player of the year, too. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool at the end of the year. So congratulations, Dedrick, on an outstanding performance. I know we had one of our interns, Alex, there covering that game. So uh, a lot of his highlights are actually, during this interview, you're going to be, you're going to be seeing it. Uh, it's like a video game. I don't think I can even run for 540 yards and nine touchdowns on Madden or NCAA 25. So that's ridiculous. But uh, congratulations, Dedrick, on the performance. Congratulations. Congratulations, uh, Coach Russell, as well. Doing a great job with this Riverside team, uh, doing a fantastic job. So looking forward to seeing you all down the road, and I wish you all best of luck for the rest of the way. Thank you. We appreciate you having us. Absolutely. We'll see you all next time on the Gridiron Football Player of the Week show.